Hello friends, I thought I'd paint something kind of fun today. I was in a whimsical mood and uh, thought I, last year I painted at this time an actual gnome. I think we even did a Zoom class on this. So this year I wanted to paint this cute little gnome house. Let me grab my scan, I mean my uh, swatch here. These are kind of some of the colors I'm gonna use. Um, I've got, I'm using my My Lang palette and uh, let me just kind of give it a spritz here. You know, I love this palette, has all the colors I love. I'm kind of a lazy painter, so I like all my colors pre-mixed a lot of times, unless I'm doing a commission or something. Um, and these are really vibrant, they're creamy, and I tried to come up with some fall colors. So I mixed Matta Red and Van Dyke Brown to get kind of this like bricky brown, olive green and deep hookers green, uh, yellow sienna and yellow ochre to get this um, kind of warm goldy brown, and then a yellow ochre and cad yellow I thought I might use for some of the lights or the little lamps here. Uh, tree green and a tiny bit of hooker's green for maybe some of the greenery. And then, of course, I'm going to add in some of that uh, MAB Gold series because <clears throat> I love that. So I'll find somewhere to put that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I will share all this with you. I'll make a one of those little $2.50 tutorials for you if you like. But those are the colors I'm going to be using. As far as the brushes... Um, I will predominantly use my eight long round. Um, we'll see, maybe I'll switch out and use some of the others, but that's predominantly what I'm gonna use. So what I wanna do first is kind of go through here and um, lay down some glazes and some washes. So let me get, um, let's see, let's create that, um, kind of reddish Van Dyke and Matter Red. I'm gonna mix that in the palette here. Kind of gave me this like brick, real warm bricky type color and I like that. So I wanna have that ready to go in my palette here. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down over the um, roof here. That's a little bit dark, so I'm just gonna add some water. And I'll go around the little flower box here. And the window, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more water to that. Got our little gnome window. And uh, like I said, I'll make a little $2.50 tutorial for this. So it'll have the swatch of the colors I use. It'll have the drawing. I really just played with this drawing and kind of looked at some pictures online and then I added in my own stuff. And I want this to be a little bit uneven here. I don't want this to just be a complete flat wash because that's just kind of my thing. I like that unevenness. Just tapping in a little bit. I'm gonna put some flowers around this little flower box. Spreading around, picking up a little bit of that color. There we go. I have the roof. Now I think for the house, I almost want to make it look flower-ish. I swatched together some of that hooker's green and the olive green. I really like those two colors. Um, let me just check here to make sure I have the right one. Yes. So that is my hooker's green. And I'm going to go in and lay down a wash here. Pretty much going around all the little elements here. 
I'm gonna go around the little mushrooms. There we go. And you know what's fun about this is um, you can really make their little house whatever you wanna make it. I really like the red and green together. I think that just is so holiday looking. Those two colors together. Maybe a little bit darker under the roof line there. And you don't even have to add in those stairs. I saw those on a little picture and I thought it was so cute. So there we go, that's done. Just using the tip of my brush here. And you know, like I said up here, I don't really want a completely even wash over all of this. I kind of like it a little bit um, lighter and then darker. I think for the door, I'm gonna do that yellow sienna and yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. Um, let me grab, should have washed my palette before we started, I suppose. Uh, let's get a little bit of that yellow ochre. Yellow ochre can be really crazy, take over everything, so be kind of careful with that. And then the yellow sienna, love that color. It's got a lot of yellow in it. It almost turns like an orangey color, as you can see here. And then I'm using about 50 water, 50 pigment. So look how easy it moves around. I want it a little bit lighter and then tap off and I'm going to give this door a wash. I'm gonna go ahead and go over the brackets because the brackets I'm gonna do like a Van Dyke brown, real dark. So they almost look kind of rusty and old and gnome-like, right? There we go. And you could draw this pretty easily. There we go. Might add in while it's wet, just a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, which is that darker brown. Um, you could also use Burned Brown if you're using the My Lang palette, and that's a pretty dark brown between the Van Dyke and the um, Burned Brown. Then I might just touch in here and there. And this will kind of be the color that I do those brackets as well. I'm just using a damp brush here and mixing that in a bit. Because I feel like I wanted kind of this old rusticy feeling, so I don't want everything to look perfect. There we go. Okay. For the little windows, I'll use like a yellow ochre with cad yellow, which I had in my palette here, and just do a wash. And I can actually even go over the little wood dividers in the window because they're going to be a dark brown. So once I paint over this yellow ochre, they'll They'll, it'll be covered. So there we go. Just make this easy, make it fun. Add flowers, add whatever you like to add. Might just tap in a tiny bit more there. Now here I am kind of avoiding those wood separators you don't have to the dark brown will go over that just fine just to make it look like maybe there's some light on the inside of the house the little gnome house there we go just gonna lift a little bit of that here and there so it almost looks like there's some brighter areas in the house there there we go. Oh, and then let's do our little lamp there too. So I'm gonna do that quite light. And actually, I think what I'll do is go in there with some wet paint 
I mean, uh, just water. And then I'll dot in some yellow and kind of let it spread so it's a little bit uneven. There we go. Maybe even pick that up again. I'm just lifting some of that color out. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry, then I'll go in and do kind of these caps and things. I think around the door, I want to do maybe a dark brown. So let's see if this is dry. It's pretty dry. And I'll grab my Van Dyke Brown. Last year, I actually did a Zoom class on a little gnome and we had so much fun, didn't we guys? For those of you that joined me, I'm using very light pressure and just the tip of my brush here to kind of outline that. And then I'll go around the door. Isn't that cute? I love these little gnome houses. Running out of water there. There we go. And once I know this is really dry, I'll go in and just color in that little doorknob. Okay. Let's do our little flowers here. I think what I'll do, let's make sure this is, yeah, it's pretty dry. For the um, greenery, I thought I'd do like a tree green and a hooker's green. So that's what I've got in my palette here. Let's get a little bit more in there. My tree green and a little bit of my hooker's green. And I'm just gonna do dabs and create some little greenery like that. And then we can go in with maybe some little yellow flowers. And again, I'm just using some dabs And I don't even care that it's spreading a little bit with the green, that's fine. Maybe some orange in there in the middle. There we go, it's kind of fun. Once those are dry, I can go in with that dark brown on those as well. I thought this would be kind of a fun little card too. Isn't that cute? I'm really not using any particular techniques here either. It's really just wet on dry to get kind of that, um, uh, you know, very um, concise lines. And then let's do our little pipe there. I think I will do that, maybe a little yellow ochre in there. And again, actually, we don't even have to do wet on dry. Let's get that wet. And then we'll just tap in and let it kind of spread. There we go. Might just help it. So this is definitely using the paints in more of an illustration type of um, feel when you go wet on damp. And then I feel like I wanna make that little box in there a dark version of the roof. So let's get a little bit of that red, a little bit of that brown, and just color in there. I could have even gone for a bright 
color. But there you go. Then we'll do the little window. So cute. Oh, we forgot the little stovepipe. I forgot the little stovepipe. Maybe a tiny bit of gold in there. There we go. And I want to make that just a little bit browner. So I'm going to just add in a tiny bit. I don't really like when things have that illustrative look. I'm going to go ahead and do this little mushroom here, and then maybe we'll add some white dots to it. Another one back here peeking out. And one here. So cute, aren't they? There we go. All right. Might even tap in a little bit more of that red. Rinse my brush. I saw a special over the weekend. Actually, it was on a loan, if you watch that show, and they were talking about these red mushrooms in, I think it was Australia, and said they were poisonous. I thought, eat gads. I'm gonna do some little yellow flowers. That way it kind of brings that yellow down into the bottom here. There we go. Maybe we should add some right here. Then we'll add grass there. I think I'll use my, let's see, let's use my angle brush for some of that green. And I can just tap in. I love this chisel side. It works so well for grass and things. There we go. Just going with a little bit of white water on the bottom here. Oh, and let's do this here, <clears throat> which I'll use my eight long round, go into that reddish color. Maybe a little bit of the brown. Oop, got a lot of the brown there. And I'm going to make this lighter as I get towards the center. So I'll wash, rinse my brush got a damp brush and then wash rinse again like that and let's get our lines in the door grabbing my angle brush again and some of that dark brown which I had in here nope get a little bit more of that and make some lines here. There we go. Just use my little bro, where's my little, there it is. Okay. So look how cute, how cute is that you guys? I might add in tiny dots of that orange, kind of like we did up here. You could even, ta um, you know, flick your brush with some splatters. And now go back in with my long round and I'm gonna color in, paint in this little stairway. I want a little bit more of that. I'm gonna lighten that up a bit. 
lighter wash, so I'm just adding in more water and do a glaze over that. I really want the top of the stairs to be a little lighter than the face of the stairs. So I will add that in some darker areas. And then let's add in our little handrail. There we go, maybe some of that yellow. And now I can go in with a tiny bit of that dark brown. Should wait till that dries, I guess. I don't like, I think that one of the reasons I love watercolors is because I don't like things a consistent color. I always like blending. So I try to do my best not to just get a flat color. I like it to be kind of washy. And interesting. So just taking some of my dark and color in the back of that staircase even though it's a really tiny detail to me it kind of makes a difference but look how cute our little gnome house is turning out isn't that cute and you could really get fancy in here and do all kinds of things I guess we could make that Brown on the bottom here, too. There we go. And our brown doorknob. Our old rusty hinges. So fun. I feel like little kids would love to paint this, too. I know my grandkids would. And a darker value to put in a little bit of that wood grain. There we go. And then let's just add in some various colors in here. Another glaze on the roof. So what I'm going to do is just kind of re-wet that woof, roof a little bit. And we'll just work in sections here. Going around that little stove pipe and then grab some of that red and maybe add it in here and there. Let it kind of blend. So we get this really fun, interesting look because that's what watercolors is for me, is getting these nice, washy, fun colors. Maybe it's a little bit darker under where the plants are growing. And we'll add this in here other side just wetting it and I'm just making it damp so I'm not making it you know no puddles there we go isn't that much more interesting you could even tap in maybe a little bit more brown in there that red's pretty powerful moving it around a bit, just giving it like this really old rustic feeling. There we go. And I think I'll do the little cap a green color that we used for some of this. Just 
using this tiny point of my brush, rinse and go in and lift a little bit of that so you get that fun, interesting effect again. So for the most part, I'm always working damp and damp, not necessarily wet and wet. There we go, isn't that cute? Then while it's wet, I just tap in a little bit more. Oh, I think this is really cute so far. I want to go in there and add in a little darker value. So this is what's fun about watercolors. Once you get kind of this light glaze over the whole thing, you can go in with darker values, meaning more pigment to water, and you can add in. Just add in some of these little leaves, like such. Wipe off my brush, and then I think I'll do those stairs now because this is dry. So let's grab some of our brown see what brown I want. I don't want that reddish brown, which is a sienna. I want more of the Van Dyke brown. And I'm just going to go across using a tiny bit of dry brush. So what I'll do is I loaded my brush, but I'm going to soak up some of that paint. And then I'm going to try and go sideways. Oops, see, it's still got a lot of paint on it, which is fine. So I'm just gonna rub some of that off. You really need to be as much as you can sideways with your brush and a lot of the paint removed. Let's get a, pick up a little bit more of that dark brown. There we go. and it just gives you this feeling of wood. So I'm not going back into my water. I'm going into just picking up paint and I'm not gonna get too picky with that. Just along the side of these to create a little bit of shadow. And maybe underneath, wash, rinse my brush and go along there with a damp brush just to kind of blend that in a bit. I really don't like hard lines, so there you go. I think that's really cute. I feel like we could maybe do a little bit more with this. I think what I'll do with that, this is where I'm going to use that gold. Oh, and you know what? I didn't do the bottom of my stems of my little mushrooms. So let's do that. Um, let's use some yellow ochre and yellow sienna. Just color in our little paint in our little stems there. And then I can oop, even go in and add some white dots. I think I will do that. So there's that. Isn't this so cute, you guys? And here's my gold that I think I'll use on the stove pipe. Or I'm saying stove pipe, but it's actually, you know, the little pipe that comes out of the windows, I mean, out of the chimney. And then maybe some of that in these windows. Oh, I just love, anytime I can add this gold to anything, I'm, as you know, all for it. Just to give it a little bit of bling. Let's take our white gouache, and I have found, um, this is Mission, but any titanium white tends to be a little bit more opaque, and I'm just gonna put little dots on those mushrooms. Mm. 
Look how cute. Oh my gosh. Get really creative with yours. Like you could put a little sign out front. And then I really wash that gouache out of my brushes. There we go. And then the last little thing I think I might do, I don't know, I always say that and then I find something else, is I feel like just some little details here and there. I'm debating whether I should do this gold or brown. I think I will go ahead and give it a coat. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted to make that stick out a little bit. Wash, rinse my brush. And yeah, that is exactly what I wanted. And then I might even use some dry brush on this door. If you've been watching me, I've been playing with dry brush a lot lately. So holding, I just rinsed my brush, tapped it off, and now I went into my paint. Ooh, yeah, look at that. That really gives it this old antique -y look. There you go, wash, rinse my brush. And we could even do little white flowers. I do these paintings very spontaneously, you guys. So a lot of times I haven't really practiced these before. There we go. Make it look like there's some little white flowers in there. That's cute. And I think I'm pretty much done. I can always go on and on, to be honest. Maybe I took some green paint and I'm just gonna swatch on the side. Just to give it a little more interest. Maybe pick up a little bit more of that. Sometimes I like some, just the smallest little details can make such a big difference where it makes people kind of stop and go, oh, do I see something there? Some little leaves. Maybe some little leaves in here. Grab some of that tree green. I mean, you could really just go and go, keep going. But isn't that adorable? What a fun card. All right, I think I'm pretty much done. Look at me, I say I'm done and then I go in and I thought, oh, maybe I could add in a little shadow under there. Yeah, it's, again, sometimes those little tiny, and watch this, you guys. So this is a red. The opposite of red is green. So when you use complementary colors, it can really make this shadowy look. So I could just add a tiny bit under here, and it would look like a shadow. I'm just adding a tiny bit of that green under there, and it looks like a shadow. I could have used a tiny bit of red under here. Let's pick up some of that red I used for the roof and put that under there. And then I go along that edge with just a damp brush. And look at how much difference that makes. I want to pick a little of that up. See what a difference those little tiny things can make? All right, you guys. Well, I hope you give this a try. I will um, send you the drawing if you want the drawing. And then I will also be 
creating a little tutorial that would have my color swatch and my, um, my color swatch, my drawing, and kind of the directions for this, what I did. But I think I'm pretty well done. All right, happy painting, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for being part of my community.